as a lawyer, you come to court expecting the court to apply the law. You come to court expecting the court to rise above populist sentiments in the public. Unfortunately, on this occasion, this court played to public sentiments by quoting public sentiments, by quoting unverified, unsubstantiated allegations of recruitment of children into homosexuality. To that extent, the court was disappointing. But nonetheless, um, the court's decision must be respected, even if, like in this case, we disagree with it. I think that we will look at the judgment, study it, and quite possibly take this to the Supreme Court, because you cannot allow this kind of judgment to remain on the law books. That a court of law is citing unverified allegations, is citing public sentiments, is citing unverified customs and customary values of a very diverse society, I think that that is disappointing. In principle, today the justices have retained or maintained the law and secondly they have also said that there should be no injunction or they will not welcome any injunction to stay or to hold on to it while the matter is still being uh, handled in other fora. That was uh, decided and so we are really happy about that because as far as we are concerned homosexuality destroys individuals, homosexuality destroys families, homosexuality destroys society. This is something that actually destroys civilizations and we can see from history there's no civilization that has survived homosexuality. So because of that we don't want to follow uh, those countries that have decided to to, to, to do it. We cannot go and be led to the ditch when we, are, when we are watching. So because of that, we are really happy about that. There was a small section about health and also about uh, privacy and renting homes and so on, where the court said that, okay, maybe they should be allowed to do that. But well, we are going to look at it. We are going to study. Our lawyers are going to uh, look at it and we are going to give our response to that. If we need to go to the Supreme Court, we are going to go to them. So that we defend our families, we defend our children, we defend our nation. The time has come when Africa needs to stand on her own feet and chart out her own course and destiny. We cannot be uh, colonized again sexually or colonized again uh, culturally. We refuse that. Time, time for Africa to now take our own course uh, in our hands, our future in our hands, and this is it. We are moving forward as Ugandans. I didn't have a chance. I was disappointed because many people are talking about World Bank that we can't afford the, the law, that they are not going to give us money. But the truth is, we can't afford LGBTQ. And to me, it was a perfect moment in court to interrogate Pepe Onzima. How much did she spend on getting a sex surgery? The average sex surgery is about $25,000. Now, if only 1% of Uganda's young people take gay identity LGBT theory and they take sex surgery, that's $25,000 times half a million people. Uganda can't afford those billions. Not only that, they must have a lifetime of uh, hormones, they must have a, a lifetime of gels, they must have a lifetime of steroids. This is big pharmaceutical hooking our children to this. The second thing we can't afford is HIV AIDS. The new HIV AIDS law means that Ugandans are the ones who are supposed to pay for treating people with HIV. Me, my brother Steve. Now, if more people get HIV, that means the taxpayers are mandated to pay. And many of you know we are struggling to raise taxes. We are told that people who practice homosexuality are 10 times bet more likely to get and spread HIV. This is a study all over sub-Saharan Africa. 2009, the Lancet magazine published those papers even up to today. Any group that is 10 times, that's 100% more likely to have and spread HIV. The average cost of treating someone with HIV in America is $50,000 per person. 50. 
If only 10% of Ugandans get HIV as a result of this, we are going to be bankrupted. So the judgment today was protecting not only our culture, but protecting Uganda from sliding into economic bankruptcy, spending malaria money in buying Sodome girls. We can't spend money of helping women to give birth in sex changes. So I, I really missed my day in court because I wanted to ask Pepe. I wanted to ask Andrew Mwenda. Andrew Mwenda, in what capacity do you defend homosexuals? Are you yourself a, homo, a homosexual? How do you speak for them? Because we have seen many people come here, including Andrew Mwenda, crying, oh, you can't do this, you can't. But Andrew Mwenda, in what capacity do you speak for homosexuals? Are you yourself a homo? Oh, you are not. Are you paid to?